All right, NPFL match day four breakdown. Before we get into this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Three draws and zero away wins this match today, but there were 22 goals scored all together. Let's start with Plateau United's 3-0 win over Heartland FC. Plateau United back-to-back -back home wins for the club. Heartland FC another away loss. As we proceed into the video, Fidelis Ilechuku facing his old club. He was just a Heartland FC last season, and now they're here to visit. And Heartland FC came out swinging two opportunities early on in the game. This was a great block by Toto Daniels. If not, it would have been a goal. Definitely nice shot and better block. As you see, he gets down and makes the block tremendously, keeping the score at 0-0. And that was really helpful because Mohamed Zukifilu finds Jesse Aquila and he just pokes it past the goalkeeper to give Plateau United a 1-0 lead. Next up, Jesse Aquila turning provider. This time he finds Chimeze Zuchuku who rolls the ball past the unrushing goalkeeper and put the ball into the back of the net. As we see on the replay, the man was onside and once he got to the ball, it was murder she wrote for Heartland FC. The third goal was scored by Mohamed Zukifilu, assisted by former AMB player Ruben Bala. Finds him in the box and he just needs one touch to get himself together and the second touch to get it past the goalkeeper. Zukifilu could have ended the match with a brace after lobbing the ball past the defender, getting a little bit of a lucky break twice, but the shot goes right at the goalkeeper and it is saved and the score remains fly to united three harlan fc zero moving on rivers united hosting sunshine stars that match ended zero zero rivers united still undefeated this season sunshine stars get a good away draw the match was played in potaka and at the end of the day rivers united will have themselves to blame because they had a bunch of opportunities that they could have used to get the lead in this match but they were very wasteful and when you waste all these opportunities what's gonna end up happening you're not gonna like it because at the end of the day rivers united dropped two points next up shooting stars hosting casino united shooting stars won that game by a goal to nil wasil alalade scored the goal from an a and by player gets the goal for shooting stars and that is their first win of the season katsina united with another away loss just got the derby victory against counter pillars and you would hope that they would build on that but against shooting stars they lose by a goal to nil outside the action we have to talk about the pitch yes this was the same pitch that hosted aqua united just earlier this season and now what a christmas miracle the only question is what took so long why wasn't it fixed when the season started why did it have to take people complaining about it for it to be worked on that's the only question but as of now everything looking good moving on abia warriors played a one-all draw with quarry united Abia Warriors now with back-to-back -back draws after playing a draw against Niger Tornadoes. They get held at home. I still say Abia Warriors are going to be a team to watch out for this season. So much talent on the side. I mean, defensively, they're not that good. But when you talk about going forward, they got so many good players. And I expect to see more from them this season. Quarry United looking more like it nice way to get a point away from home first point away from home for the season and if they want to get into the continent like they almost did last season they have to get these results and even better you know Gordon Abaje got the first goal for Abia Warriors a header from a corner kick and he gets it past the goalkeeper poor defended by the choir United guys they just stood there and ball watched and Obaje just heads the ball into the back of the net. Equalizer was scored by Ade Bambo Ademola, assisted by Moritala Lawal. Nice cross, beautiful header by Ade Bambo, and that gave the team the equalizer, and that was all they needed. Next, we're going to talk about Rangers International hosting Niger Tornadoes. That match ended 4 0 in favor of Rangers International. Abdul Maikaba side with their first big time performance of the season. Four goals all scored in the second half. 
Niger Tornadoes, a poor loss by them. The first goal of the match was scored by Kenichuku Agu. He scored a penalty, sends the goalkeeper the wrong way, giving Enugu Rangers the 1-0 lead in the second half. Second goal also scored by Kenichuku with a free kick. Goalkeeper was lost in the sauce, and he just slides it past some nice free kick to get it over the wall and put it into the back of the net. I didn't see too much if there was a deflection or anything like that. The next goal was scored by Shedrak Asegbu, and he gets it into the back of the net. Nice shot, just puts it past the goalkeeper. Left-footed strike, and it goes into the left lower corner. Fourth goal, honestly, we can't see the fourth goal, and be honest, it was scored by Christian Naji. And this is honestly the reason why you didn't see this game on the channel, because what could I do about that? And next up, we talk about Nasrawa United defeating Aqua United. This is another match that I would have loved to put on the channel, but you could barely see the ball in the match. Nasrawa United first win of the season against Aqua United. This is a team that almost made it into the continent last season, and they finally getting back on their feet. Got that three-all draw against Heartland to begin the season, but they drew at home and went away from home and had another draw, and this is finally their first win of the season. Aqua United get their first loss of the season. The champions of the MPFL, they had a good game against Nasarawa United, but it just wasn't meant to be. So many missed opportunities by Aqua United. And I believe that both teams are going to have a good season, not just one, but both teams. These are two of some of the better teams, better sides in the MPFL this season. And let's get into these highlights. And the first goal of the match was scored by Michael Tochuku. Cross comes into the box and just everybody is in disarray. He gets the ball laid off to him and he slams it into the back of the net. As you see, the defenders are on sixes and sevens, not knowing what's going on. And only one defender actually tried to do anything. Just poor, poor, poor by Aqua United on that note. Second goal of the game was scored by the man himself, Silas Wankwa. Mentioned by the Super Eagles coach just lately. And guess what? This is a guy with immense quality, and he deserved that mention. I mean, people are naming other guys who deserve the mention, but I feel he deserved it, definitely. And, yeah, great way to start the new year for Silas Wankwo. And the next match, Dakara hosting Remo Stars. Match ended one all. Seems like Dakara cannot get away from controversy. This match was dripped in it again. Murita Lawal scored for Dakara, while Samuel Anekwe scored for Remo Stars. I say this all because we just gonna go straight into the nonsense. And when I talk about nonsense, I talk about this situation right here. A member of the Dakara technical staff attacks an assistant referee, and here he goes right here walking up to him, tries to slap him. In all honesty, when I slow down everything, the only thing he did was push him a little bit. But check the guy out. The assistant referee does a great job of composing himself. I tell you what, not a lot of guys are going to just stand there right after they've been attacked like that. A lot of people are going to attack back, and you wouldn't fault them when they do. The attacker was later on identified to be a member of the Dakota technical team, and apparently he has lost his job along with a couple of other members of that technical team, according to the club, by the way. The LMC has also decided to banish the team to Benin City, according to the team. I didn't see that on the LMC's page, but the team Dakota themselves say they've been banished to Benin City, and I feel like that's just a ridiculous decision. How would you ban a team because of one individual's decision to attack an assistant referee? You look at the situation that happened in the championship a couple years ago, Birmingham City playing Aston Villa, and Jack Grealish was attacked on the pitch. You didn't see Birmingham City Again, disposed to go play at Swansea Stadium or something like that. Because you're doing this right now. When a bigger club does something wrong, you're not going to keep the same energy. 
so let's stop all these games and just so funny that you're doing this right after dakota call out the referees and call out the lmc because both those parties definitely look like clowns when the video came out that the ball clearly went over the bar but now they feel like we got you in the wrong and we got to punish you all the way and this is just bad it doesn't look good it's just a ridiculous decision one person made a poor decision the club took action against that decision and it should have been left like that what is all this talking about banishing them you didn't keep the same energy when players were being attacked you did not so let's not do this and that's just wrong by the lmc i must say on that and moving on in the next match we talk about counter pillars hosting a and by and kaduna counter pillars got their first win of the season defeating a and by by two goals to nil and now it seems like a and by is the one in trouble back to back losses now and these are two big matches you lose to rivers united and you lose to counter pillars not saying that these are teams that you're supposed to beat automatically but these are matches that you will want to know what you got and what you're seeing is that you're not you're not you know keeping up with these teams you're not on their level if they're being you both of them being you so you want to be on their level on the level of a uh, rivers united or counter pillars so that's where the problem comes in for a and by but when you look at the goals that were scored against them and first of all let's talk about this pitch you look at this pitch right here and you compare it to this the pitch that was used against Egypt for the 2015 Nations Cup qualifiers. This is the same pitch. And how did everything go so bad? That's the question we should be asking. How did everything go so, so horribly wrong? And when you look at the game, the first goal was scored by Rabi Ali, a penalty in which he sends the goalkeeper the wrong way. Apparently, that's his 105th goal of the of his career. And here we have Ojo and Lauren Leke making a mistake and Kokote Udo punishing him right away. He kicks the ball into his defender. Kokote Udo gets the ball and check out this finish. Lifts it over everybody right into the back of the net clinical and ice cold nice by Kokote Udo and next up we talk about Wiki Torres 3-0 win against MFM Nelson Abiam Isa Usman and Saleh Ibrahim get the goal for Wiki Torres MFM another away loss not much you can say about that for MFM they just need to find ways to get results away from home just like they get results at home Wiki Torres 3-0 win biggest win of the season I'm expecting big things from Wiki Torres. I'm not going to act like this is something that I didn't expect. I'm expecting them to do things like this this season. And hopefully we get to see more from them. And next up, you have Gombe United. 3-0 win against Lobby Stars. Lobby Stars don't seem too serious this season. You losing 3-0 to a newly promoted side. They should have shown more fight. Seems like the players they lost, I mean, it was just too much. You, you're talking about you losing both your fullbacks in Abu Beduru and John Lazarus. You losing your main striker and OC Martins. I mean, you got a lot of work to do if you're Lobby Stars. Gombe United, they had that match against Aqua United. Like I said then, they were going to take that and move on with it. And look what happened. 3-0 against Lobby Stars. Hopefully, we see more good performances like this from Gombe United this season. As we look at the table, Remo Stars, Rivers United, and Nasarawa United are the only undefeated teams remaining in the Nigerian Professional Football League. Sunshine Stars are the lone team without a win this season. a and Bar are in ninth place, but there's only two points separating them in the top of the summit. So yeah, that's the breakdown for NPFL Match Day 4. Thank y'all for watching. Peace.